Here with John Ramdean and Robin Black. Final weekday before we go into the card in Newark, New Jersey on Saturday night and lots of news to discuss. As per usual, we start off with George St. Pierre, the man who was under the radar th this past week when a video surfaced People of him nuts. preparing, hitting mitts. What does this all mean? And then we got a report from a, a reporter out of Quebec who had stated that an announcement is forthcoming about George's return and that was quickly shot down by George himself and his management, not ruling out that it won't happen, but nothing is imminent and people are just looking for crumbs, anything to give us to feed that appetite of a possible George St. Pierre return. People want to see this guy fight. They're just desperate to get any information they can, but I feel I feel George is the puppet master here, and he is just watching everyone dance. This is excellent for both the fans and for George St. Pierre. It's just, uh, you know, back in the day when George was uh, active, people were teasing for years and years and years and years a super fight between Anderson Silva and GSP. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? But people love the idea of talking about it just like this situation right now. Is he coming back? Is he not coming back? Oh, he's been off for two years. How is he going to look upon his return? Is he going to get an immediate uh, title shot against Robbie Lawler? And George, again, just sits back saying, I'm still relevant. If I want to come back into the sport, I'm going to come back at the top of the game, and chances are and he knows I'll get my title shot. the outlet of where he is going to make this announcement. We know all our, our friends over at TriStar. They've got this channel and open on. mat. This seat, I will vacate it for George to come here and he can host Fight News now. And at the end, he can slip in the biggest news item of all. When he's coming back, he will announce it here. Yeah, yeah isn't it funny though? It's like not, uh, sort of mainstream news reporter sends one tweet or like a guy at Under Armour said it a month ago. It's like, George St. Pierre's come back. How would any of these people know anything? George is more secretive than anyone. I really think that he's such a success story in that he made the money that he wanted to make. He retired a champion. He avenged the losses that he had. Uh, I mean, perfect what, scenario. Yeah, what is there left to do? He's the great thing about that is then you come back only if you want to and you choose to. And man, when people do that, that is the best reason to fight, the best reason of all. Not because you got a mortgage or not because there's some unfinished business or you got something to prove. You just want to fight. You want to compete. So if he fights, it'll be for that reason. And that's a wonderful reason. If Anderson Silva happens to get beaten by Michael Bisping, which I think is a very real possibility, could, would he still be relevant if that fight were to be made? Would that still work? I, I yes. mean, I, I guess yes, based on the name value, but I think that you know, fights that make more sense are at 170 pounds. I think, you know, you want fresh matchups. A fight with Robbie Lawler, I think, will garner so much attention, of, of, especially with George's return, and he goes into an immediate title fight. But I think there's so many challenges at 170 pounds for George St. Pierre to get excited. But, but I honestly don't think he's coming back. It's a, he's handled it uh, brilliantly, too. Fighters go, stand in the cage, there's blood coming out of their eyes, and they go, I'm tired. And then they go home and they take a week off and they feel depressed, back. they get drunk for a bit, and then they hit the bag for three days, they go, I'm back! You know, George said, I'm taking a long time off. He never officially used the R word. He's never officially said he's back. When he's talking about thinking about it, maybe I'll think about it, I'm gonna go train with my friends. That's the way to do it. And because he's not giving you any of this stuff is why this conversation exists and why those tweets carry weight. Because George ain't saying nothing, so we gotta, everybody else gets to speculate. Yeah. I, I think that he's in a, a very a very good spot at this moment. I mean, we, we've interviewed George so many times, and I mean, interviewing George Fight Week, and then seeing him immediately after that announcement when he vacated the title and we were at a mall in Quebec City, the weight that had been lifted off his shoulders. This guy, I've never seen him so happy in a public setting before. I think having that off of his shoulders and he could go on his timetable, he didn't have to base everything around this one date that I've got to peak for a fight and gear my entire life around. That's been, that was his life for Decade. For 11 years yeah. at that point but, uh, in time. Uh, but on top of that, it wasn't just the, the peaking of the, the fight time, uh, getting ready for his championship fights. It's just very similar to what Conor McGregor was talking about, where you have to be obsessed in order to be the greatest on the top, the, the highest level of mixed martial arts on the top of that mountain. It just has to consume your thoughts 
night and day. You're constantly working on trying to be the best you possibly can. I mean, there's most athletes in mixed martial arts, they don't have to worry about that stuff. You're just trying to improve. But when the spotlight is on you, everybody expects you to perform. Uh, the promotion is making up tons of money off of you. You have an obligation. And you can see Conor McGregor dealing yep. with the same type of exactly thing. Exactly the same thinking. And it's the same type of approach, too. You don't, mastery is not achieved by dabbling. Mm -hmm. Mastery is achieved by nonstop, ongoing commitment to mastery. And that's what the greats do, and that's what the greats have always done. I mentioned Anderson Silva and uh, Michael Bisping. We have that live on the channel. Yeah. That's super cool, <laughs> yeah. man. Anderson Silva on this channel, uh, live main event. Uh, but uh, he's the guy to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood, <laughs> right? Knock on wood. But he's the guy to look at here. Because why am I, now I, I don't know why, but I've, I used to jokingly troll oh, Anderson Silva, he's gonna lose to uh, Stefan Bonner. You know, like I've always kind of played that game, I don't know why, but uh, when you, it actually gets to a point where Anderson Silva, we have real legitimate questions. He's in his 40s, what level does he train at? His hero, Roy Jones Jr. is coming back and getting beat because after a certain point, if you're obsessed and constantly getting better, you're training with the desire to get better and that work is what makes you great. If one day you wake up and you go, I'm great, that's a bad day. That's a terrible day. That is a day with no motivation to keep improving. And if he walks in there just thinking, I'll beat Michael Bisping just because I'm Anderson Silva, he's in a lot of trouble. George is quite smartly not coming out and saying, I'm George, I'm going to fight. If he's going to fight, it's because he's continuing that quest for mastery. All right, Ken Velasquez, uh, Dana White revealed that he is going to need back surgery for the reason that he was uh, forced to pull out of the fight with Fabrizio Verdum says it will be a relatively quick recovery of about four weeks. Nonetheless, it's surgery on your back. And uh, the fact that it is a disc issue, this is something that if you don't correct now, back problems can be awful and not something that you just get over. I really hope that Cain Velasquez takes this time to properly will. rehab this injury. Will he? Yeah, he will. I mean, I think the, the people that are around him will, will ensure that, uh, he, again, he's got money. So he can afford to take the time off. If they're and dangling this idea of you fighting in May or June, I, I think that you, you you're going to have someone racing to get back into the gym. You, you know why I don't think he will? Uh, this was like a very real loss. But the time, the other time he lost his belt, he lost it going into a fight with a blown out knee. And that experience, he went in and, and Dos Anjos caught him on, on top of the head and he was out. And he knew, at least he would have believed, that that blown out knee was a giant responsibility for my loss. He wanted out yeah. of that fight. And, he did, and at, the word is that he had looked at it and said, I gotta, get, I gotta step out, I got a bad knee. And I don't think anybody forced him. The but Fox there was show. also, it was the first ever show on Fox. So he, he made that choice to fight while injured and lost. And I think that lesson is going to be a powerful one. Yeah. I don't think he'll make it again. Uh, some interesting news in regards to female mixed martial arts. First of all, Amanda Nunez is going to fight Valentina Shevchenko on that loaded UFC 196 card on March the 5th. A great opportunity for Shevchenko in for her both. second yeah. UFC fight. You knock off someone like Amanda Nunez and you've catapulted yourself in that division. And Bellator, uh, Scott Coker telling MMAfighting.com that this year they plan to install championships at flyweight for the women as well as 145 pounds. So they're, they're in the process now of beefing up those divisions and, and finding talent. But there's clearly all guns blazing now with female mixed martial arts and installing two more titles. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Bellator is doing what they need to do to try to uh, garner attention, but I don't know if this is the thing that's gonna do it. Right now, they're still dealing with growing pains. Like, I don't know how many people are gonna be excited. I mean, we all love watching Paul Daly fight. Oh, you look at some of the uh, most exciting fights of the last decade, that fight with him and Nick Diaz, certainly one of those fights. You know what he brings to the table, but you look at some of the other names on the card, not really the biggest names to even get the hardcore fans' attention. So I think, I'm sure they're trying to do what they can to get attention and try to create a legitimate product, but it's still gonna take time. Fighting is no different than any other thing in the world. You know, when, when Walmart comes along, a lot of stores disappear. And fighting, there's so much fighting. We're the biggest fight consumers in the world at this desk and the people watching, Fight, uh, fight Network viewers are the biggest fight consumers in the world. There's so much fighting. You can either watch it, go next, next, mm -hmm. next, done, done. But if you wanna go back and look at some of your favorite stuff, or if you go on Fight Pass, watch old things or consume other things, even if you watch people talk about fighting, there's not enough time left yeah. in the world to watch everything. So Bellator is in a, a tough spot that way. There's just not enough time left in, in your day to go and watch every single Bellator card. And as a result, it's a challenge for them. And 
you know, hey, we're going to go and, and really concentrate on women fighting. That's a, that's a big thing. We can tell that's a big mm -hmm. thing. Are you a little late? Like, are all the best women in the world already in the UFC? You know, what are you going to do? Final thing it involves Chael Sonnen, who's mm. going to be part of the next season of Celebrity Apprentice with the new host, Arnold Schwarzenegger, as the original host was kind of booted out of things. But I think it's remarkable to look at the trajectory of Chael Sonnen and his post-fighting career. I mean, in mid-2014, he's he kind of left the sport disgraced. I mean, he was essentially told, you're, you're not going to be licensed again to fight, left with a cloud of controversy, lost his job at Fox. And here he has, he's, he's gone over a World Series of Fighting to stay in, in that realm of things and fighting, launched a podcast, got a job at ESPN. He's like a cat. Now he's on, on NBC. He's bulletproof. Yeah. Like That's... here's a guy that is just, and I think a large part of it has been, A, he's a very charismatic individual that transfers his star power very effectively. And on top of that, if you listen to him, he acknowledges, like, he is not running from his past that he screwed up in a, in a giant degree with his drug use. But nonetheless, here is somebody that w we always look at the immediate reaction when someone fails a drug test or does something awful. And this, you write them off. And here's somebody that, I mean, I looked at that time as, man, can this guy come back from this? And look where he is yeah, two years it, later. The thing about Chael Sonnen is you just have to look at his career. I mean, we, Robin and I were talking about the fact that we would air Sport Fight here. And you look at the interviews and his hosting, not like the Chael Sonnen of today. I remember uh, his fights in Bodog. Uh, Bob Sheridan would call him Chael Sonnen. He, there was no correction whatsoever. <laughs> Imagine he, if he said that. He, now. Exactly. <laughs> he, he just went with the way things were at the time. He he got into the fire. He learned. He understood. Wait a second. You have to do some things differently if you want to make the money. If you want to get to the top of the mountain, it's not just about being the best in the sport. And he did it. He embraced it. And it's like, wow, okay. You release the book. You just create a persona. Go down that pro wrestling uh, avenue, so to speak. And it's worked out for him. And it, he continues to do this stuff. I'm totally biased. Yeah. Chael's my friend. Yeah. And I just think the world of the guy. I think he's brilliant. He called me at like 7 a.m. one day, which I think is 4 a.m. No, maybe 9 my time, which was like 6 his time, mm -hmm. from uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, West Lynn, Oregon. And, uh, and to give me advice, because I just asked him. I wanted some insight into something. And no problem. I'm like, what are you doing up at 6 in the morning? And he's like, I got, a, I got like a 10-month-old kid. He's a regular guy. Yeah who is genius and brilliant and performs on television. And part of performing is making some people hate you and some people love you. He does that so brilliantly. He's so highly intelligent. And you can go and there's online odds to bet on who's gonna win. Chael's winning this show. <laughs> I will guarantee it right now. Not only is he winning this show, but he will come out of it as a mainstream television star. Well, I can definitely tell you, Vince Neal, oh. he's in pretty tough, I think. I think he's going to get lost <laughs> in this particular reality show. That wraps it up for us. We will be back next week. Of course, the prelims for the Johnny Hendricks, Stephen Thompson card. They are airing exclusively in Canada on Fight Network. Tune in 8 Eastern, Saturday night, February the 6th.